Hello, and welcome to Mount Vernon. My name is Jeremy Ray, and I'm the manager of History Interpretation. I'm often asked by guests, tell me something that I wouldn't know, or tell me something interesting. I find these questions the most difficult to answer because there are so many interesting stories about George Washington. Many people already know a lot of these stories and sometimes they're not really all that fun to tell. However, I think I have a story that not many of you will know and hopefully you'll find interesting. I'm standing in front of a well-known painting of Washington at the Battle of Princeton, which took place on January 3rd, 1777. It was the final battle in a series of daring sneak attacks and maneuvers that reignited American resolve during the Revolutionary War. But instead of focusing on the merits of this beautiful example of American artwork or the strategic and tactical cunning of General Washington, I want to focus on a detail that often gets overlooked, the stars on Washington's epaulets. This painting is by Charles Peel Polk, and it was completed in 1790. On Washington's epaulets, you will see three six-sided stars. Polk's famous uncle, painter Charles Wilson Peel, also completed a number of portraits of Washington. In Peel's painting of Washington at Princeton, which was completed in 1780, we see Washington with five-pointed stars on his epaulets and a light blue sash across his body. In another example of Washington at For Planck's Point in New York by John Trumbull, Washington has no stars, no sash, and no defining insignia. So the question is, why the inconsistency in these paintings? Surely there was a way of determining rank in the American army, and if so, what was it? First, I think it's important to remember that when Washington received his commission from Congress in 1775, the army was quite literally an army of one, just George Washington. He didn't have the luxury of uniforms, ranking insignia, or even a staff. Washington quickly got to work recruiting aides and army and putting regulations in place to manage it all. On July 23, 1775, General Washington took a stab at organizing his officers and non-commissioned officers with recognizable ranking insignia through the following general order. As the Continental Army have unfortunately no uniforms and consequently many inconveniences must arise from not being able to always distinguish the commissioned officers from the non-commissioned and the non-commissioned from the private, it is desired that some badges of distinction may be immediately provided. For instance, the field officers may have red or pink colored cockades in their hats, the captains yellow of buff, and the subalterns green. They are to furnish themselves accordingly. The sergeants may be distinguished by an epaulet or stripe of red cloth sewed to the right shoulder, the corporals by one of green. A few weeks later, July 14, 1775, Washington issued another order specifying that he, as Commander-in-Chief, was to wear a light blue ribbon, or a sash. Major and Brigadier Generals were to wear pink sashes and aide-de-camps green. Ten days later, probably to avoid confusion, it was decided that Major Generals would distinguish themselves from Brigadier Generals by wearing purple sashes. So, are you confused? I know I am, and I'm sure many soldiers were as well. In June of 1780, it was finally decided to outfit generals with the more familiar star system. Brigadiers wore one, and major generals wore two on their epaulets. George Washington, as commander-in-chief, wore three silver stars. It wouldn't be until May 28, 1798, through an act of Congress, that the rank of lieutenant general was created, a rank intended for George Washington to oversee the Army's preparations for a presumed invasion by the French. Now, that invasion never came, and that rank was never fulfilled as Washington passed away in December of 1799. So now we finally have an answer to why Washington is depicted with a sash or with stars, but we haven't discussed the discrepancy in the style of star or why Washington is sometimes painted with no insignia at all. Well, the easy answer to that question is simply artistic license. Many of these paintings were completed many years after the conclusion of the war. In fact, there are a litany of images where Washington in his military uniform uh, that was painted by people who never actually met him. As for uniforms, oftentimes details would be filled in later based off of descriptions. So the six-pointed star was very popular in the 18th century and was actually used by General Washington on his personal commander-in-chief flag, an example of which you can see at the tomb here at Mount Vernon today. So this concludes our story, right? George Washington was the commander-in-chief. He initially wore a light blue sash to distinguish himself from the rest of his officers, and when he resigned his commission to Congress in 1783, he wore three silver stars on his epaulets. 
While all of that is true, our story doesn't actually end here. After Washington's death, America continued to expand and grow and change. There were many conflicts along the way that required Congress to reauthorize old military positions as well as authorize new ones. During the Civil War, for example, General Grant was designated as the General of the Army. During World War I, General Pershing was granted overall command and the title of General of the Armies, plural. Pershing chose to wear four gold stars, though Congress never specified that insignia, that insignia for the rank. During World War II, Congress authorized the creation of General of the Army to wear five silver stars. And it was also proposed that Douglas MacArthur be promoted to General of the Armies, but that was never carried out. Over the course of 200 years, George Washington, arguably America's greatest military hero, had been surpassed in rank. In 1976, the bicentennial celebration reignited patriotic fervor. Everyone recognized George Washington as being first in war and first in peace, but how could we return him to being first in our hearts? Through a joint resolution in Congress on January 19, 1976, and approved by President Gerald Ford on October 11, 1976, George Washington was posthumously pro promoted to rank of General of the Armies with the highest seniority. That means General George Washington holds, and always will hold, the highest rank in the American Army. Conjecturally, that makes him like a six-star general. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this both informative and interesting. I hope to bring you more fun facts of history uh, later in the future. So thank you.